Okay, so this is the last little bit, sort of an extra piece, bonus, Cohen's D, R squared, confidence interval. Let's do them in slightly a different order, just to get it you know, out of a bit of a different routine. We're gonna do R squared. The formula for R squared is T squared divided by T squared plus the degrees of freedom. T that we calculated was three, and our degrees of freedom was five. So we have nine divided by nine plus five, so nine divided by 14. And nine divided by 14 is 0 0.64. That is a large effect size. Anything above 0.25 is considered a large R square. Let's do Cohen's D. For Cohen's D, we are going to need another piece of information that we calculated back in 7b. Uh, so in 7b, we calculated that the variance of the different scores was six. So for Cohen's D, the estimated Cohen's D, the formula here is the mean of the different scores, subtract mean and D, divided by the standard deviation of the different scores. Now be careful, this is the variance. See that squared up there? That's variance, we need standard deviation. So we're gonna have three divided by the square root of six, because the square root of the variance is the standard deviation. So that's three divided by, just a moment here, uh, 2.45. And that makes our Cohen's D 1.22, which again is a large effect size. Anything above 0.8 is considered a large effect size for Cohen's D. The last to calculate is a confidence interval. And just to mix things up, because I don't think I have a demo of this just yet, I want to do the 99% confidence interval. And I'm picking what I want because this is extras. Normally, the question will tell you it wants the 80th, 88% or 80% confidence interval or the 90%, et cetera. I'm going to pick it because I'm just doing this as extra pieces. For the confidence interval, our formula is mu d equals um, the mean of the difference scores plus or minus t times the estimated standard error of the difference scores. Now, this t, careful, it's not from your calculations of the overall t. It's not your t obtained, and it's not the value necessarily from your, uh, your, your, your step two, where you find your critical values. It's in this case going to be different. So what we need are our degrees of freedom and the confidence interval that we're looking at. And what we're going to do, what we're trying to find is centered on our mean, so centered on MD. We're trying to find the bounds where 99%, we're 99% sure that it's going to be in there, in the middle. So between these two values, we're trying to find a number for here and a number for here. The area under the curve always adds up to 100. So if this is 99% out in these tails is 1%, which is 0 0.01. Okay. That's important when we go to table B2. So I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go to table B2. We're going to still need those degrees of freedom. We're going to look in proportion and two tails combined. Whether in the hypothesis test, whether that's a one tail or a two tail test, for confidence intervals, we're always in proportion in two tails combined. And we're going to look on the very far right, 4.01, because we want the 99% confidence interval. That value that we're going to use is 4.032. So it's right down here in this bottom corner over here. Okay. So what we need. 
we need MD. That was three plus or minus the T that we just looked up times the estimated standard error, which is one. We calculated that back in 7B. So we have three plus or minus 4.032. So our confidence interval, we don't have it yet. We're going to take three plus 4.032. So that's 7.032. And we're going to take three, subtract 4.032. And that is negative 1.032. And that's our confidence interval. We're 99% confident that the true value of the mean of the difference scores is somewhere between negative 1.032 and 7.032.